السلام عليكم الله وبركاته. إن الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده ثم أما بعد. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. فإنك على خوف عظيم. صدق الله عظيم. اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ومولانا محمد بن الخليفة الأكرم وفي الملائكة على آله اليوم الدين. My respected and honored brothers and sisters of the Deen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this a time that is a beneficial time for myself and for you as a means to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by congregating and fulfilling the divine command of Allah in which means on a Friday all you will believe leave all of your trade and get together for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give yourself and others beneficial reminders as a means to purify yourself and get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such purification, as mentioned by our Salaf and Khalaf, the pious predecessors who came before us, that generation of our people, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 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 alayhi wa that the best generation is that of mine, and then the one that comes after, then the one that comes thereafter. Amongst these statements, the orders are read of the Salaf, of the pious predecessors who came before us, five things have been mentioned which need to be kept in mind as a form of self-purification and as a means to get closer to Allah. Number one, it is required for every believer to have ilm, beneficial knowledge. As Rasulullah said, the narration which can be found in the Sahih collection of Imam Muslim by Sayyidina Anas bin Malik radiallahu which means that to seek sacred knowledge is obligatory upon every Muslim man and woman. So ilm. The second one, Amal. Allah Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Inna mal a'amal bin niyad. Deeds. Every deed is according to its intention. So the second thing that needs to be taken into account and implemented in your life after ilm is Amal. Number three is Khawf. I will fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear from those things which earn the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in which means that when did they will come the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment will expand upon those individuals who earned his displeasure. And in the Quran al Karim, we have been told, given clear warning, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came as a call towards Allah, the one who gave good tidings and glad tidings to the believers, and the one who warned against the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fourth thing which needs to be upheld by every individual is taqwa. Taqwa, often translated, as fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the expansion of this term is to have a conscious awareness of Allah at all times. As in the Quran al Karim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu taqullah, wa kunu ma'as sadiqin. Thumma qala ta'ala, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu taqullah, haqqa tuqatihi, wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning have a conscious awareness of Him. Wa kunu ma'as sadiqin, and come together with those who are truthful. Meaning, join one another in the truth. Ya ayyuhaladzina amanu taqullah haqqa tuqati. Or you will believe, have a conscious awareness of Allah, as it is His right that we become aware of Him. As it is His right that we worship Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. And don't have death. Do not die illa wa antum muslimun. Except that you are in the state of an Islam. Illa wa antum muslimun. And then, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi wa sallam about taqwa and taqwa ha huna Where is taqwa? It was asked. Where is an individual carrying taqwa? Conscious awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi wa sallam pointed towards his chest three times and he said taqwa ha huna. A taqwa ha huna. A taqwa ha huna. Taqwa is here. Taqwa is here. Taqwa surely is here. And he emphasized upon the ha huna the third time, giving a clear indication that it is not necessarily about your outer appearance, rather it's about the state of your hearts. At taqwa. The Qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ittaqullah haythuma kuntu. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi wa sallam, Fiyya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our conscious awareness of him, haythuma kuntu, wherever you are in every state that you are in. 
whether you're with your family or you're out working or you're conversing with other people on the street, you're going about your daily life, whatever you're doing, our conscious awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the speech you deliver, the talk that you deliver, the conversation that you partake in, is this going to earn the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or is it going to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ittaqullah ilmu ma'kum, whatever you are. And then the fifth thing which we have been warned about is wara, scrupulousness. Staying away from doubtful matters. Making a clear indication that we do not even approach those things which earn the displeasure of Allah and haram. Rather, we only go towards halal. And if anything has a doubtful matter in it, stay away from it completely. Be scrupulous about your matters. Be scrupulous about what we do. Remember in the collection of Imam al in the Mother Arba'in, in the 40 collected hadith by Imam al Nawawi, the fifth hadith which can be found in, which means that a believer always does everything scrupulously, even if it is cutting a gold. So when you cut a gold and you're about to partake in the food, even when you cut a gold, make sure you're scrupulous about cutting the gold. You do it in such a way that you create minimal pain and harm for that gold. And after you've done it, you clean up appropriately. And after you have done it, make sure you take off the meat of the bone completely. You don't start eating the bone before you start eating the meat. And when you take off the skin, you need to do what is appropriate with it at that given time. Wara, scrupulousness, being scrupulous in every single matter. Especially anything which regards the deen, then you will find that the deen is no longer just about your religion. Deen is a whole way of life. Deen is a whole way of life. Deen is not something that is restricted to your Jum'ah when we come to the masjid, or five times a day when we congregate in the masjid. Deen is 24-7. Deen is something that we live with and we die by. We abide by it whilst we're alive, and Allah gives us a peace for them with Iman when we die, inshaAllah. Deen is such a thing that if you adopt these five things and you adopt it to your whole way of life, your deen will become a way of life. Your religion will become a way of life. We as the believers, we do not distinguish between the life of the dunya of this world and the year after. What we say is we live this life. The way Rasulullah has lived his life, we try to abide by it, earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we taste the results from the year after. And we reap the rewards of whatever we have earned in the year after. Al-Dunya, that the world is a prison for a believer, and it is heaven for the non-believer. When you're, why is it being described as a prison? Why is the word being described as a prison for a believer? When you're in prison, you're restricted. There's only so much you can do. There's only so much areas you can dwell into. There's only so much time that is given to yourself as free time. Keeping this in mind and adapting that analogy to your everyday life, the dunya sitlun mu'min, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi, whatever he said is the truth. He does not speak from himself, illa man yuhiyuha, except that it has been inspired to him by his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he says, the dunya sitlun mu'min, what does this mean in your Allah, my respected brothers and sisters? In the world that we are living in, we're living in a time of turmoil. We're living in a time of chaos. We're living in troubled times. We're living in those times about which Rasulullah sallallahu said, which means the narration which can be found in Ibn Majah and Sahih and Tayyip and Bukhari and Muslim. That there will come a time for a believer where to live your life as a Muslim will be as if to walk around with burning coal in your hand. Burning coal in your hand. How difficult is it to walk around with burning coal in your hand? Almost impossible. The fear is always there that you're going to cause more harm to yourself than good by walking around with burning coal in your hand. And when that time comes, if a believer holds on to the deen, then they will be counted amongst the mujahideen without even lifting the sword. You will be counted amongst those individuals who strive for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who have partaken in a battle for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, though you have not even lifted the sword. And these are the times that we are living in. To hold on to your being has become a such. We see it around ourselves every day, every step of the way, regardless of where you are, whether you're in Britain, where we come from, or you're living in Trinidad and Tobago, or you're living in the Americas, or you're living in Africa, or you're living in Asia, wherever you are, every step of the way, we are being pulled towards the dunya. We are being pulled towards the dunya in such a way that the dunya is beautified. And then we tend to forget that this is the very same dunya which 
presented in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the neighborhood of Isra'u al-Mi'raj in the night journey that Allah took him. During that particular night, the bird was shown to him as a form of a very beautiful woman. And as this woman approached him, he started to look and he saw that first her hair starts to turn grey and her skin starts to wither down. And as she came closer and closer, she became so old and withered and tired that she could not even carry herself. Said that Jibreel said that this is the world and the example of it. This is the world and the example of it. This very world one day will destroy itself. It will become withered and tired. Though around you all you will see is beauty, but the reality of this world is that it will get destroyed. And you as an individual will taste death. You will taste death. And when death eventually comes about, remember, your here after doesn't start on the day of Qiyam. Your here after don't start when the trumpet is blown. Your here after starts the moment you die. That's when your year after starts. That day of Qiyama is the day of recognition. That day of Qiyama is the day of account. That day of Qiyama is when every single person will be brought in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be taken into account. But your year after starts the moment you leave this realm and you go towards the celestial realm. Let the soul leave the body. This is enough for us. All we know is that one day this is guaranteed whether you're a believer or a non-believer, whether you're a Muslim or a non-Muslim, regardless of who and what you are, every single person in creation does believe that we will die. And how you will die? Allah Ta'ala. That is within the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's down to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the fact of the matter is that we will die. So what to do before we die? Remember the traditions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which can be found in Al-Bukhari, Al-Muslim, Rabah Asad, Ibn Ahmad, Ibn Ahmad, Ibn Ahmad, Ibn Ahmad, Ibn Ahmad, Various narrations referring to the character of a believer. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to do, to refine and perfect our characters. But in the Quran, Kareem, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about him, فَإِنَّا فِي الْعَلَقُوبِ الْعَظِيمِ For sure, O Prophet, you are of esteemed character. You are of beautiful character. And wherever he went, whoever he approached was only approached by him with a beautiful smile. And that brought them towards him. Then they were overtaken with awe. They started to hear his words, the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they entered into the deen through his character. Remember the narration given by Sayyidina Abu Huraira, which can be found in the Bukhari, in which means Rasulullah said, I guarantee Jannah on the outskirts for that individual who gives up arguing even though he knows he is correct. Who gives up arguing even though he knows he is correct and gave it up for the sake of Allah. He doesn't want to partake in an argument to cause displeasure to another individual. To cause them any harm. So he gave it up for the sake of Allah. Guarantee Jannah on the outskirts of Jannah. Then more going towards Jannah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi said that within the boundaries of Jannah, I guarantee a place for that individual who gives up lying even though he is joking. So even when you're joking and you're having a bit of humor time with your friends and your family, when you're lying with your boys and you have a good time with them, and when you're joking with one another, but you give up lying even when you're joking. You don't lie. Remember the humor of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was as such that even when he was joking there was an element of truth in there and nothing but the truth in there. So an individual gives up lying even when they're joking and then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa sallam hasani which means that I guarantee a place in the middle of Jannah for that individual who strives to refine the character and become a good individual. So look at the difference from being on the outskirts of Jannah, within the boundaries of Jannah, then in the middle of Jannah, closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For that individual who beautifies the character, for that individual who strives to break away from negative emotions within themselves, an individual who strives to only do good to others. And remember the narration of Sahih al-Muslim, by Sayyidina Abu in which means that I guarantee Jannah for that individual who only does good and says good. Who only does good and says good. And then it was asked to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is the trait of a believer, of a true mu'min? 
Mu'min, complete believer, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi said, a true believer, a kind of Mu'min, a complete believer is that individual through whose hands and through whose tongue other believers are completely safe. Other believers are completely safe from your tongue and from your hand, meaning you do not cause them any physical harm, you do not cause them any verbal harm, you only say good words to another believer, you only deal with them with good dealings with your hand. This is the trait of a true believer. A mu'min, and what has been said about mu'min, in the dina amun wa amru salihat, wa umjarnatu tatiri min tahti al muhar. Those individuals, that group of people who are believers and have good deeds, for them is the promised garden. Through under and which the stones, under which stones, there's beautiful rivers flowing. There's beautiful rivers flowing beyond our comprehension. We cannot even compare the rivers of Jannah to the rivers of this world. We cannot even compare the two. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives me and you the opportunity to refine our characters, to become good individuals whose dealings are only by the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 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 al